protect your DNA. BioPQQ can promote formation of new mitochondria. InfoWarsStore.com well, Hawaii wants to become the first state to register gun owners into a federal database, and of course, they expect other states to follow. Now, this is under a bill proposed by uh, Senator Will Espero, and he says that Hawaii would enter gun owners into an FBI database, and it'd be available to local police. Now, the FBI already has a similar database, but it's only, they say, for people in positions in trust, like school teachers and other public officials. But Hawaii would be the first to enter gun owners into a database. And of course, people there are rightly concerned, saying that this is basically saying Big Brother is going to be watching us and they'll know right where the guns are so they can go and grab them. And they're not unfounded with these fears. Of course, New York had a similar registry in place that was, of course, used by the police to confiscate firearms. It was the SAFE Act uh, of 2013, and the NYPD sent out notices to registered gun owners demanding they give up their guns. Uh, it ordered them, those who possess firearms, uh, to either surrender them, remove them from the city limits, or otherwise render them inoperable. And of course, the only people that complied were non-criminals because the criminals, of course, did not listen to these orders of uh, rendering their handguns and things like that inoperable. And of course, as we've seen, them actually killing police officers in that state, as well as many other crimes. So again, this is a big thing of confiscating firearms from law-abiding citizens, just like what happened in Venezuela. Now, coming up later in the show, I'm going to be talking with David Knight about some very scary similarities between what's happening in Venezuela and some things we're seeing here in the United States. But only four years ago, Venezuela banned guns for private citizens. They said that the only people that should have them are military and police. And now we see what's going on in that country. So this is only four years ago. They were already experiencing food rations and energy rations, things like that back then. So you think the government didn't really see the writing on the wall, didn't know what was going to be happening there, that the collapse was imminent. And so, of course, they put forth these gun confiscation plans, ban, a gun ban for private citizens. So we'll be talking about that coming up later. But that's not the only database that the federal government is working on. They've also got a massive biometric database, and now the FBI is wanting to keep that a secret. They are saying all the information that the FBI stores as part of this biometric database should be kept from anyone who might, you know, re request to know if their information is, is stored there in the records. It's known as the Next Generation Identification System, and it draws biometric data from passport registration, security checks, and judicial processing. Um, it includes biometric records on foreigners as well, but it's not just fingerprints. It's iris scans, facial scans, palm prints, and any other bodily information that can be collected as part of a routine interaction with a government government agency. And now the FBI is arguing that the information that it has stored in this database is so sensitive that it should be exempt from the Privacy Act, which would prevent anyone from asking if their data is included. And of course, they say that, you know, letting people know about their information that they hold in this database could compromise ongoing authorized law enforcement and national security efforts. But the FBI also adds that the agency could be using this data to catch future criminals. And so, of course, we know exactly what's going on with the whole pre-crime thing, and they want to be able to store this data, everyone's data, in the event that you maybe one day become a possible criminal. Now, of course, that's great if you're going to be a terrorist, but we all know that they've been tracking activists or like the Black Lives Matter movement. People were being tracked. Uh, even on the hashtags, they were uh, using surveillance on social media to just see where these groups were going. So these are not violent criminals. I mean, it, some of them did, of course, do some pretty stupid things in their activism. But, you know, these are people who are going to be looking at the, the government, especially as the years go on and we're in these very heated political times. And, you know, it kind of gives some credence to the Obama administration trying to reword the term criminals because... If we're all in this database, I guess we're all going to be known as justice-involved individuals. So maybe we do need to change that term. Now, even smaller cities across the United States are getting into this massive high-tech crime surveillance. Uh, in Hartford, Connecticut, they've just recently unveiled their real-time crime and data intelligence center. It helps officers on the streets find suspects 
and avoid harm by quickly giving them crucial information. New York City opened the first of its kind real-time crime center in 2005, and now a lot of other smaller cities across the country are opening up their own centers, acquiring surveillance cameras, gunshot detectors, and other technology, which of course we've told you about here as well, which is even your street lights, recording your conversations, um, crosswalk signs, things like that. So they've got these cropping up everywhere, building this huge surveillance panopticon, and they will send these videos um, even directly to police officers' cell phones in real time. So this is what's happening. And now we even have a, a startup saying that they can predict, just by analyzing your face, whether you're a terrorist or a pedophile. And this is what they always, they always bring out these sort of terms, like, no, this technology is only gonna be used to stop terrorism or pedophiles, because they know these are things that people can get on board with. Oh, that's fine, I don't care. Go ahead, put me in your biometric database, as long as you'll stop pedophiles or terrorists. But as we know, everyone's gonna be in this database, everyone is gonna be affected, and everyone is gonna be considered a justice-involved individual. Now, this is an Israeli startup. It says all it has to do is take one look at a person's face and realize the character traits that are undetectable to the human eye. Basically, they say that our DNA makes up our face and this is what determines that whether or not we're a terrorist or a pedophile or other uh, poker player. Now, this is called faceception. They've already signed a contract with Homeland Security to help identify terrorists, right? So this is where your tech Companies are getting involved with the government and helping to build this surveillance state. The company said its technology can identify everything from great po poker players to extroverts, pedophiles, geniuses, and white collar criminals. Just about everybody. And they wanna know everything that they possibly can about everyone, which is why everyone with their Snapchat filters, good job, you're helping to build this biometric database by putting little puppy filters on your face. And of course, even here in this Washington Post article, you have people speaking out saying, this is, you know, uh, can you predict that someone's gonna be an ax murderer and then what do you do? Do you arrest them before they become an ax murderer? Or, you know, how does this work? So we, we can all see the writing on the wall. This is totally minority report and pre-crime. But now we have NBC coming out and really pushing the safety aspect of microchipping your children and just from a young age, starting them up in this, putting them in the <laughs> surveillance database because of course it'll keep them safe. And the NBC News report actually promotes that the microchipping of children is just gonna happen sooner rather than later. And then Americans are eventually just gonna accept the process as something just as normal as the barcode. This is what we're talking about, the microchip. I don't know if you can see it in my hand. It's the size of a grain of rice, very, very small. And the expert that we spoke with actually tells us that barcodes were introduced in the late 1960s. And back then, people thought, uh, this is way too invasive and too weird. And now barcodes are so commonplace that we don't even think about them anymore. The expert tells us this will happen sooner rather than later. So as you can see, NBC is doing its job and just really extolling the virtues of the microchipping of your children, really aggressively promoting the safety aspect of this rather than the concerns over the Orwellian scope of <laughs> microchipping your children. So then the piece goes on back to an electronics expert, Stuart Lipoff, who asserts that microchipping children is safe and inevitable. So just go ahead and get with the program. People should be aware that testing is being done right now. The military is not only testing this out, but already utilizes its properties. It's not a matter of if it will happen, but when. And Lipoff also told NBC that people shouldn't be concerned about Big Brother tracking their children and that the technology was merely an upgrade on the traditional barcode. Yeah, so don't be worried about the fact that it's the military who is utilizing this technology and also the irony of children being treated like barcoded items is completely lost on this whole thing. So this is this is kind of freaky. But then we have some experts and an entrepreneur coming out saying, "What it, you know, what's the worst that could happen if AI uh, could turn evil?" And so some of the things they say, you know, might be far-fetched, but it could definitely happen. AI could take over resources such as money, land, and water so that it can establish monopoly over access to them. They could take over political control of local and federal governments, as well as international corporations and charities, 
Robots could reveal informational hazards, threaten society's structures. They could also set up a total surveillance state or exploit an existing one, reducing any notion of privacy to zero, including privacy of thought. Of course, since you have those microchips in your brain, and AI could force a merger by requiring that all people have a brain implant, which allows for direct mind control. And of course, it says they could also enslave mankind. Now, these are some far off ideas that we see in sci-fi films, but these are experts making these claims. And of course, we've been warned by other people who still are just full steam ahead creating artificial intelligence that they hope can be artists and, and find the soul of robots at the same time that they're telling us that they could enslave us in the future, but it's totally fine and it's super progressive and loving. Now, another breaking news that came out today, we're finding out that Bill Cosby is gonna stand trial on those sex assault charges. The judge heard the rape accuser's claims uh, that the actor told her to drink wine and take herbal medication to relax before an unconscious assault. So also we found this week that due to a deposition uh, that he gave years ago, he admitted to sexually assaulting teenagers, also drugging them, and also that models were sent over by the agency some six to seven per week in order to, you know, be so he could drug and rape them. He's a serial predator, but of course protected by the media, much like another Bill who was again being protected by the media as well. Now NBC News is calling uh, Donald Trump's latest attack ad another low. They're saying, you know, just bringing up these allegations of sexual misconduct against Bill Clinton from the past. These are decades old and this is a new low. And do you know what is actually a, another low? Covering the actions of a serial predator for political profit. And Donald Trump seems to be the only one doing what the media refuses to do, calling them out. Now we have another <laughs> Alex Jones calling a Glenedict Arnold, Glenn Beck, American psycho Trojan horse, because even after Facebook has admitted censorship, Glenn Beck, the establishment media man that he is, still denies that it's going on because he is setting himself up to be Zuckerberg's manservant. And uh, Facebook, of course, has admitted that it is rogue, you know, it's rogue employees may have shown bias against conservatives. And we had activist Lauren Southern on the show today explaining how that exact thing happened to her with moderators b being given too much power. Lauren Southern, thanks for joining us. Hi, Alex. Thanks for having me. Wow. So, I mean, uh, break this story down for us and your view on it. Right. So I had a friend of mine post on Facebook that Donald Trump doesn't hate Muslims. He just wants to defend the country from ISIS. There was no, nothing lewd about the comment. It was purely his political opinion. And it was removed by Facebook and he was issued a ban. So I took that post, he sent me a screenshot on Skype and I shared it on my Facebook and said that it's absolutely disgusting what Facebook is doing to conservatives and they need to stop. And not only a couple minutes later or maybe an hour later i go check my facebook and it does the whole you've been logged out of your account that's always the note that you get when uh, you're in crap with zuckerberg and then you log back in and it tells you what you did wrong i've been banned a few times now but now it's 30 days it's, i guess next is going to be forever i know i know they will remove your account uh, next time which is kind of scary because i have thirty thousand followers on there that i try to show my political opinions to but they removed my post for complaining about Facebook censoring conservatives. And is this not total 1984? Yeah. They admit they're doing it, it's happening. There's a Senate investigation. You talk about it and then they remove it and say it doesn't exist. I mean, that is incredible. Yeah, oh, it's absolutely incredible. And you know what? Uh, I only, I've been banned before for posts that should not have been banned and I could not contact Facebook to get my account back and just had to wait a week. If I had not been, if Infowars had not reported on this, if Drudge Report had not reported, on this, Facebook wouldn't have given a crap. They would have left me banned and my account may have disappeared by now. Um, but they wanted to save face. They wanted to save face. So they contacted my personal email and said that this was caused by human error. Now, everyone knows the moderators. When you flag a post on Facebook, the moderator has to look at it and decide, does this fit our community standards? And that moderator looked at that post twice 
because he first banned the first one that was removed and then looked at the second one where I was complaining about it being removed and banned that one as well. That wasn't just an accident. That was on purpose. And Facebook knows it. They've come out and finally admitted it. And yet you still have establishment people like Glenn Beck coming out and saying this isn't happening. I don't know why he's saying that. It's very strange. Maybe it's because it's majority Trump supporters that are being banned. I don't know, but it's definitely happening and it's very scary. You have 60% of millennials get the majority of their news from Facebook and that trending timeline. How much damage is this doing that they're not getting both sides of the story? A lot of people ask me, what is the most important area of InfoWars that runs the whole operation that is having such a big effect against the globalists? And I've said it over and over again, it is you, the listeners and the viewers, that send us the intel, the news tips, that support the broadcast, that spread the word. You are 90% of the operation or more. You don't stand beside us, you stand at the heart of InfoWars. When I talk about the people at InfoWars, from customer service, the shipping department, being just as important as our anchors, our researchers, our investigative journalists, and myself, it's absolutely true. Without this team that we've built over the last 20 plus years, we wouldn't be able to do any of what we've been doing. And that's what's so exciting because we finally built up to a point where we now have the launch pad. Introducing AutoShip for InfoWarsLife.com, a new way to save time and money when you stock up on InfoWarsStore.com products. Again, ladies and gentlemen, when products are sold out, you're unable to get them, sometimes for months, but we hold back the products for people that have already signed up for AutoShip. When you choose AutoShip before checkout on your order at InfoWarsStore.com, we'll give you 10% off and give you guaranteed delivery of out-of-stock products that are on your AutoShip list. Plus, we're giving you free shipping on all orders above $50. Listeners have been requesting this for years because it's so easy to forget to reorder the products when you need them each month. Now it's finally here. Auto ship at InfoWarsStore.com and InfoWarsLife.com. It's easy. Go to InfoWarsStore.com, select your favorite product, click on the auto ship, and choose how often you want us to send you another order. As you know, I coined the term 360 win. And with the new auto ship feature at InfoWarsLife.com, it's a sure win. You add to that free shipping on orders of $50, it is a can't lose. Visit InfoWarsStore.com and save 10% off on your next InfoWars Life order by selecting Auto Ship at checkout and get free shipping on all orders above $50. That's InfoWarsStore.com or call toll free 888 253 3139.